change me for you. Gonna love this one. They rebel. say revolutionaries don't have no fun. Well, that's what they say. We've been having fun. We've been having fun out here. We waiting on the world to join us. Black and green. It's only revolution, baby. This one's for you. Ain't that hard, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Yes, the Revolutionary Road radio show is here live in Clearwater, coming to you in the surreal uh, twilight zone of the Trump presidency. And, you know, we're going to have a special guest that's really going to speak to the reality that he is really not the true president. Uh, And we're going to have him on in just a moment uh, because we had the special privilege of inaugurating who we believe the true president should be at the uh, inauguration protests in D.C. in the second week of recapping what happened at the inauguration protests in D.C., and that is the one, the only, Vermin Supreme. Uh, Along with John Penley, my uh, good friend, brother from a different mother, organizer, uh, extraordinaire of the D.C. protests in the first half of our show, In the second half of our show, we are going to have a special guest from the Council on Islamic American or American Islamic Relations, CARE, otherwise known as CARE. And they are going to be speaking to, and it's the communications director for CARE, uh, Wilfredo Ruiz, who uh, is taking the place of Desiree Lynn with Love Has No Borders because... um, she believes he will better represent the concerns about this whole thing that's been all over the news about the order, presidential order, that just resulted in the firing, by the way, of the acting attorney general as we speak uh, all over the news right now for refusing to support the order that Donald Trump gave of uh, a hold on all immigration, of a hold on all refugees, you know, just doing everything possible to uh, stop uh, really the human rights and the rights of uh, people to come to this country, uh, a country that was supposedly founded on uh, giving me your tired, your poor, your disenfranchised, and this executive action, heinous executive action, targeting Muslims specifically, uh, is nothing short of contrary to what we as the United States represent. So we'll be talking about that in the second half of the show. I want to let you know that the Revolutionary Road comes to you live every Monday night at 10 p.m. on the Tan Talk Network, which includes 1340 a.m., 1350 a.m., 1400 a.m., 106.1 FM, 104.3 FM, as well as podcasted tune-in app on your phone and a live stream as we speak. And you can go to Tantalk1340.com. That's Tantalk1340.com to get all that information. And we're also on YouTube. Just look up under the Revolutionary Road Radio Show and check out our YouTube channel. We also are on Facebook. Please, please like our page on Facebook, Revolutionary Road Radio Show on Facebook, because we have a whole bunch of videos from the D.C. protests, from protests that happened this past week uh, around peace issues, around the pipeline protests that happened, uh, and around a Fight for 15 protest, not to mention um, the uh, interview with an amazing band called Reagan Youth, which, by the way, was a play on words against uh, Hitler Youth, because this band spoke out in the 80s about totalitarianism. It's a punk band, one of my favorite they played with the Dead Kennedys, and they spoke about totalitarianism. And you might see my shirt on the live stream, and it has a picture of Trump juxtaposed with uh, Reagan with uh, AK-47s in the middle, implying that we're dealing with war-oriented uh, fascist regime right now. And given what Donald Trump is doing in the last 24 hours, what else can we say? And some have taken a stand and some haven't. But people all around the country and around the world have taken a stand on behalf of refugees and immigrants and particularly the Muslim community who is under deep persecution uh, 
In fact, there was a hate crime that happened in Canada at a mosque uh, just within the last 24 hours. Uh, a terrorist attack being called by the Canadian government that left six people dead and eight injured. So we're living in dangerous, crazy times with a maniac who claims to be president. Well, I want to play you a quick excerpt. Uh, before we get to this excerpt, I want to m- make sure I thank our sponsor, St. Petersburg Community Acupuncture, uh, who is a longtime supporter of the Revolutionary Road Radio Show. Uh, they offer sliding scale appointments. You can go to 727-823-1700. That's 727-823-1700. Or go to their address, 1624 Central Avenue in St. Petersburg, and get sliding scale appointments in the ancient art of acupuncture. And we just want to give a special shout out to them, to Squatter Productions, to Refuge Ministries, to um, the Poor People's Economic Human Rights Campaign. And a shout out to my lovely wife who couldn't be here tonight, to uh, our, of course, amazing engineer, Pete, to Robin, my co-host, uh, to Crown, whose song we always play at the beginning of our show and is a sometime co-host, as well as Connie B., which we expect to have them on in future shows. Next week, we will be having a guest who spent time in Palestine recently. His name is David Pierce, and he's going to talk about the Palestinian situation, the Middle East situation. We are also going to be having an African diplomat coming on uh, via our good friend Crown over the next few weeks, and uh, a whole host of other things. Of course, next month being uh, Black History Month, we'll be talking a lot about that and tying it into, again, the fascist uh, behavior of Donald Trump. We're going to play this quick excerpt of the protests in D.C., and then we're going to get to our guests. Going live from the Revolutionary Road Radio Show. Tear gas was just shot. More tear gas. They're running after him now. Tear gas just went out. Can't keep up with them anymore. Because they're all running their asses off. Tear gas was just shot. Well, that was an awkward moment where someone was calling me right in the middle of this craziness. Uh, We have several videos, uh, some of which we can't play until we edit them a bit as far as the language. But you can go to the Revolutionary Road Radio Show Facebook page. But tonight, uh, we have a special guest as well as my colleague in organizing these uh, concerts, anti-war, anti-new concerts, uh, of course, John Penley. John Penley, you on the line? Yes, I am. All right. And next, we want to introduce the real president of the United States, who we inaugurated at the January 20th event. Yes, the real president, Vermin Supreme. Hello, my fellow Americans and other. John, Bruce. How you doing? It's good to hear your shining voices. Well, it's great to have you on the Revolutionary Road Radio Show. And, uh, of it course... It is a beautiful day for a revolution, my friends. It is indeed. Well, we just want to say hail to the chief, the real Thank chief. You. And Thank uh, you. And for those who may have not been there, it was quite a sight. It was a beautiful inaugural event. It was uh, the people who turned out on the street to celebrate my presidential induction into the uh, thing there was uh, truly, truly a beautiful thing. The uh, the smoke grenades that the, the police were using. Uh, I, now, once again, for clarification, I did hear the D.C. police deny the use of tear gas, and I, but I do know that they you were using uh, smoke flares and like uh, and I was like, you, it, all sorts of big pink smoke flying everywhere. In, in conjunction with the uh, pepper spray that, that had been, uh, you know, aerosol into the air. It could give the illusion that it was some other chemical weapon. But I think it was mostly lots and lots of pepper spray out of those pepper spray canisters that they really like to show off. 
I think they had some concussion grenades because we did get oh, that yes. on the And I heard sting they ball grenades, which were like, uh, grenades. included like little rubber uh, coated steel pellets and other such nasties. Um, yes, absolutely. I heard many uh, large bang explosions. Um, I, I think it's uh, you know a hell of a way to celebrate uh, my victory. Uh, but <laughs> once again, uh, they were so loud that they could easily scare or spook a crowd. I believe their objective was to somehow clear that street for whatever reason. Uh, but I believe their tactics were so uh, overwhelmingly obnoxious uh, that they sort of crossed the line. I think they used uh, mu- uh, more excessive force than may have been necessary to achieve their objective. And, of course, at various points, I really had to ask them exactly what their objective was because it was not clear. You know, it's like, oh, our objective is to hold this piece of street and for that, you're going to stand there like that and, like, you know, taunt people with your very presence. It, um, you know, sometimes I question their uh, their reactions to uh, people in the, uh, doing various things in the streets and stuff. But that's just me. Uh, but it's great being president. I, I mean, I will tell you, it's, uh, there has been that little rip in the space-time continuum. Yes, oh, sure, but my people are working on it day and night around the clock past present future we will return to a supreme pres- uh, presidency in in a short order i do believe and uh... until that time i certainly uh, continue to apologize for the uh... inconveniences that we may be experiencing in the interim thank you for your patience well my good friend john penley was part of the inaugural committee anti-war event yeah. uh... John also uh, campaigned for you. <laughs> Indeed, I, I thank you very much, John. Uh, uh, <laughs> multiple uh, places. I, I was almost with Vermin like most of the summer, at least. I went to his house after the um, the protest in uh, at the RNC in Cleveland and stayed up there for a while. Uh, well, Absolutely, in, in my in my secret, undisclosed uh, secret location slash uh, superhero slash villain uh, layer that uh, that I've been maintaining. As I try to continue to put together uh, a, a high council of internet memes to replace Congress. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, it's been a crazy, crazy few weeks here since the maniac assumed power in the White House, thinking that he was the real president. It is uh, a crazy time stream that uh, that we've been presented with. Yes. So, so in that sense, I guess there was. Uh, at least we hope a crack in the time space continuum that allowed this uh, alien. Uh, it's the only thing I can say. Orange Maybe alien. So, so a, a, a lizard person through and through, uh, near as I could tell, or or, or, just, or orange, or just some nut job. Orange Julius Caesar is what we have coined <laughs> him as. Uh, uh, no offense to Orange Julius. I actually like the place. They have some good uh, orange kinds of drinks. But you they know, they were a staple at every mall when I grew up. Uh, yes, they were quite a thing. Boy, they better send us some money for that plug. Um, Do they still put eggs in their products? I, I, I just don't know. Oh yeah, I egg know. and orange juice. Who the fuck? Well, well, I'm, I'm giving back Marvin to credit for the uh, time space continuum that um, allowed some Syrian refugees to get through at JFK in New York right through that whole uh, uh, border uh, crackdown, there were a number of uh, Syrian refugees that they overlooked and got through. And I, I well, believe that that was because of vermin uh, that they actually got through without being detained. America needs more Syrian refugees. I, I fully concur. I do have been saying for quite a while that, yeah, a rising tide does, in fact, uh, lift all bloated children refugee corpses but that i mean that and that's a fact and that's the problem with what's going on in this knee-jerk reaction to uh, not allowing refugees from uh, terrible war zones uh, into our country this is america we have so much space we we have utah we have arizona we we have millions of miles of acres of of desert that would just make fine squalid refugee camps i mean why can't we host all these refugees here in America, and we can at least keep an eye on them. Why can't we at least uh, convert the, all the FEMA camps into refugee camps? It's the least we can do. Thank you. I'm Vermin Supreme. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, as we look at this, uh, and again, things are moving so fast. I mean, even in within the news cycle, we were, as we were getting ready for the show, uh, Acting Attorney General was fired uh, under the Stunning. previous Stunning. administration. 
we have not had an insane person in office since uh, Richard Nixon. It's it's been quite it's been a long time, quite frankly. So with, with all this insanity going on, what what what? And I'm going to ask uh, my good friend John as well. You know, we we were recapping, of course, what was happening in D.C. for a little bit, and you got some of the audio from uh, my experience there. But I would ensur- encourage everyone to go to Vermin Supreme's Facebook as well as John Penley's because. John Penley, I don't know, you took like three or 400 photographs, didn't you? Something along those lines? Yeah, about 500, and uh, a lot of them have been published in the uh, Villager newspaper, and three different articles, including pictures of the limo that got burned. While the uh, police were very exciting. trying to clear that um, street with all those bombs and smoke and stuff right under their noses, somebody set a limo on fire. Uh, there, so you can see yeah, the pictures on my Facebook. Yeah. Well, and, and you can you can sense in that the anger and angst that people are feeling about this uh, orange Julius Caesar and, well, and I, I, what I, he's once doing. Again, I, I I was trying to uh, uh, to keep a, a talking points, and I was talking about perspective and context, and and how this is sort of the same thing that we do over and over again. We've been doing it for so many years. And I think we need to keep it in the context that it's what we do may be real. It might occur in real life, in real time, but it is also symbolic. And when we are on the streets, that is very symbolic of our yearning and desire to be free, our desire to exercise our right to seek and petition our government for a redress of, grie- of, of grievances. Uh, and when the state reacts with such force, that is also symbolic of the, the state's willingness, ability, uh, uh, and and willingness and ability to use violence uh, to to stop that. Um, when the the more uh, active uh, black blockers say, for example, when they they go and use uh, they break a, a window or some cor- it's a symbolic act against the corporation. It's a, it's a, uh, you know when they're running amok, setting stupid trash cans on fire. Well, that's symbolic of their desire and, and need to prove themselves to be able to be free in spite of such repression. Um, so once again, well, and, and, you know, a lot of these acts, certainly granted, they're illegal. Sure they are. I, um, some are not, but some are, you know, huge trolling activities like, you know, flag burning or something, perfectly protected uh, speech, but it, it gets people worked up and stuff. And and uh, and I, I think it's just very important that we, we respect... Uh, you know, this type of diversity of tactics. Uh, as long as nobody gets hurt. But uh, uh, it, and once again, in the context of the environment, to the protest environment, uh, emotions run high. I mean, people get worked up. It's not surprising that, uh, that scuffles occur and things, you know? I mean, it's not optimal, I suppose, but it's understandable. Well, and, um, well, police, the police are actually shooting lethal uh, or semi-lethal bombs off at you, which they were doing. It kind of gets you angry. You know oh, what I'm absolutely. Saying? And absolutely. they were definitely, um, if those bombs had landed on you, uh, they would have really seriously injured people. They scared me. And, and, I was and actually, a picture and running, you know. Actually, and, and the, several the way people that they're dressed, I were mean, injured. They are acting in an extremely aggressive uh, you know, it may be a very a passive aggressive, but nonetheless, simply their, uh, you know, their gear, it, it, it riles people up. It, it, in fact, during the deplorable the night before, I pointed out very clearly on one side of the street was a whole police line, soft fucking uniform, bicycles. It was all chill. On the other side of the street was they were all suited up. They were all turtled up. And they had been, you know, a little pe- a pepper spray release, and the people are fucking riled up at them. They, you know, th- their shields were, you know, becoming missile magnets, which they are. I mean, there's these invitations when they cut, like, go ahead, throw something at us, whatever. We have shields, uh, and the people take them up on that. And and so I try and deconstruct that in real time because it's obvious because we've seen it time and time again, and that's just the way it plays. It's 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 weird, man. It, you know what I'm yeah, and it, it truly is uh, uh, surreal and so contrary to uh, what we should be representing as the United States and the nation's oh, capital. And don't you get know. me started on public safety. My goodness, what they, I mean, short, public order? No, they are so, coming so close to creating crowd panic, stampedes, unsafe conditions for crowds. Oh, oh my goodness. Don't get me started well, on that, please. One thing you got to have is the Trump for doing is turning liberals into radicals. I think Trump has turned more 
more liberals into radicals in the very short period of time he's been in office than any other president other than Richard Nixon that I can remember in my well, history. Actually, yeah. Trump's approval ratings are the lowest in history. <laughs> I, I mean, I think it was 8%. Uh, it's even lower than Congress. Most presidents don't ever go go uh, lower can I, can I do than a few Congress. Short readings for my uh, for my new uh, book, my new novel. Well, sure, sure. We have that kind of time. Yeah, we have a few minutes, and then we have a, actually a very important guest that's going to talk about uh, from the Council on American Islamic Relations. Okay, I'm going to read this really fast because I sure. think it's really relevant in this day and age. There were harsh political realities when President for Life Vermin Supreme first took office during the days of his ascent to the White House. There were over 300 million Americans living within America's previous borders. At the time, there were only 200,000 ponies in the whole country. It was a <laughs> recipe for civil unrest. And these were not just political realities. These were reality realities. There were very stark choices to make. Would it be the mass execution of some, some 299, 800,000 Americans in order to achieve proper pony human parity? Or would the answer be something else? It is certainly true that such a mass execution would create jobs. It would also lessen the country's dependence on foreign oil. It would be good for the environment. Uh, but there were some clear drawbacks to consider. Mostly, they were merely questions of ethics and public relations. During this time of widespread civil unrest, all options were on the table. The dental high command was put on high alert. The dental re-education camps were readied. Homeland Dental Security coordinated with the National Dental Police Department. The militarization of America's dental police forces had been a great idea that was about to pay off, and not just in lower incidence of gum disease. There were riots in the streets of numerous cities. Pulsating water pick cannons knocked riders off their feet and knocked a plaque right off of their teeth. Oh, thank you. That was uh, my new book, uh, Blue P I Pony Blueprint for New America. It uh, will tell you all about the future that you're missing. IPonyTheBook.com. And I'm and sure. It has amazing artwork in that book. Just really great art, artwork by a whole bunch of artists. Absolutely. Fantastic oh my goodness. work. Does it ever. Well, the satire is not lost on us. It could be, uh, often in life, uh, humor represents reality in a very different kind of way, but helps us understand <laughs> what we are facing. And oh, I want to give a shout out to the League of Loons on the streets. We had uh, Rob Petillo playing his uh, amazing uh, guitar, singing the Hot Dog and Applesauce song. We had Matthew Silver in from New York doing weird, uh, almost naked performance arts in the streets, which uh, it really messes with the, the police's perceptions of what, what's happening. Um, I, I think we bent, uh, bent reality a little bit with, with humor and good nature and changed, uh, changed things up a little bit. And that's what we like to do in the protest world, League of Loons. Look for it. And uh, Matthew's going to be here in Asheville this week, by the Excellent. way. Yeah. What, um, do you know just, where? Um, the pizza, some pizza record store. I forgot the name of it, but he will be um, uh, here in Asheville on Thursday doing an appearance. So quite a lot of people have said they're going on Facebook to see him. So I hope so. He'll help, he, he will he keep help. He will help keep Asheville weird for y'all. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> I, you know, I I can't thank you enough for taking time out of your very busy schedule, President Vermin Supreme. Thank and it was you, an honor to be with my colleague, John Penley, and my lovely wife, Barb, in inducting you uh, in an inaugurating you it was as a beautiful ceremony the real with burning president. limos in the background and flashbangs, and uh, it, was, uh, it was very exciting indeed. Well, uh, I, uh, if, if I could get two seconds, I'd like to say something. I think sure, please, uh, John. It means a lot to me. Um, you know, I think what Trump has just done as, as history uh, passes is going to go down with the internment of uh, Japanese Americans during World War II. Uh, my late ex-wife's parents were put in those concentration camps during World War II. They were loyal Americans, but they were Japanese. And I think that um, that uh, Trump, uh, what he just did over um, the last couple of days, is going to go down in history uh, and, and be looked back on exactly the same way people now look back on the roundup of Japanese Americans during World War II. Well, I unfortunately concur, and I really believe that we live in a very dangerous time, and I've seen uh, uprising after uprising that's just simply been amazing uh, in relation to this. And so I do want to thank you again, my good friend, my brother from a different mother, John Penley, and of course, 
President Vermin Supreme for being on the Revolutionary Road Radio Show. Thank you Thank guys you. Keep again. The uh, keep the faith. Okay. Uh, continue Thank you. Uh, national strike against Trump on April 4th. Yes. Point that out. Yes, uh, we are organizing. National strike against Trump April 4th. That's the day Martin Luther King was shot in Memphis, supporting a strike in Memphis. I think we can... We spread the word. We can get a whole national strike going. I never thought that happened before, but I think we can do it. So let's keep on working. Yes. And let's keep on um, hitting the streets. Okay. All right. Thank you both for being right. on the Revolutionary Road radio it's show. It's a beautiful day for a revolution, my friends. Oh, Thank you. Yes, it is. See Thank you, you all both. later. All righty. See you in the streets. All right. And that uh, was uh, Ver- Vermin Supreme, as well as uh, who is... <laughs> By really our definition, the one who should be the real president in the sense that uh, I think he represents the revolution in the streets that people are emerging with. And then my good friend, John Penley, co-coordinator of the D.C. protests. Uh, When we come back from our break, uh, we have a very special guest, an important guest on tonight. And I want to thank Desiree Lynn with uh, Love Has No Borders for deference to, I think, a very important guest we're going to have on, uh, Hiba Rahim, the Council on American Islamic Relations Regional Coordinator. And when we get back from the break, we will be talking to CARE, Council on American Islamic Relations, about what's going on. Well, this is the Revolutionary Road Radio Show, and uh, I just want to let you guys know that. Uh, this show comes to you live every Monday night on the Tan Talk Network. We mentioned already it's on 1340 a.m., 1350 a.m., 1400 a.m., and 106.1 FM, 104.3 FM. Uh, one of our sponsoring nonprofits, The Refuge, has a funding drive going on for our mission in Sierra Leone, the 68 orphan girls who are or- orphaned by the Ebola crisis. If you wish to support that, you can go to www.paypal.me backslash the refuge fl I want to give special thanks to St. Petersburg Community Acupuncture located at 1624 Central Avenue in St. Pete, Florida offering sliding scale appointments of, in the ancient art of, of acupuncture you can reach them at 727-823-1700 this show is produced by Squatter Productions the Refuge and the Poor People's Economic Human Rights Campaign we want to thank our supporters, and if you would like to sponsor or underwrite the show, we are looking for underwriters and supporters. You can go to 727-278-1547. As we mentioned, the show can be heard on those stations that we mentioned earlier, but also on the web, podcasted, or in your TuneIn app on your phone by going to www.tantalk1340.com. Or you can listen to our YouTube channel, as well as uh, like our Facebook page under the radio show's name, Revolutionary Road Radio Show, which has a number of videos that you can check out uh, and audios of different things we've been at over the, including the inauguration protests. Uh, Again, thank you to those who endorse and support us, including Pinellas Greens, Gulf Coast Greens, Refuge Worker Center, St. Pete for Peace, Ahuru Solidarity, Students for Democratic Society at USF St. Pete, League of Revolutionaries for a New America, Food Not Bombs, St. Pete. There are so many events coming to the area, but two we want to highlight. This Wednesday at uh, Community Cafe at 7 p.m. is St. Pete for Peace's documentary films. This week is called, the film is called The Mask You Live In. Wednesday at 7 p.m. at Community Cafe, which is 2444 Central Avenue. Also every Monday night at Williams Park, Food Not Bombs does a meal share with those who are hungry. They believe in the concept of feeding uh, or providing and sharing food with others rather than bombing other countries. What 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 an amazing concept to consider. Instead of the diplomacy of war or the lack of diplomacy in using war, why not do meal shares all around the world? Also, uh, we want to let you know February 9th that Janice Live, Michael Frenti, and Spearhead will be coming uh, political rock hip-hop activists. We are anticipating having an interview with them. Uh, Thursday, February 9th is the Green Party meeting at St. Pete Community Acupuncture at 8.30 p.m. And then on the 12th, we want to let you know about a potluck gathering happening Sunday, February 12th at 2 p.m. That's Sunday, February 12th at 2 p.m. at Sawgrass Lake Park in St. Pete. 
a punk rock gathering for revolutionaries to offer the third perspective because we believe that at the Revolutionary Road Radio Show here that the two corporate parties, the Republicans and Democrats, continue to contribute to this heinous war <coughs> on terror that's ca- causing harm throughout the world, especially in the Muslim community. And that is, uh, you can get more information for these and other events by calling 727-278-1547. Well, as we come back to our show, um, I am very honored to have uh, as a guest tonight, and I want to again thank Desiree Lynn for arranging this for us. Uh, and please help me uh, if I'm not pronouncing the name right. Hiba Rahim, the CARE Council on American Islamic Relations Regional Coordinator. Welcome to the Revolutionary Road Radio Show. Good evening. Thank you very much for having me. You're pronouncing my name perfectly. And yes, I am the Regional Coordinator for Northwest Florida of Northwest Florida, uh, Care Florida's office up here in the Panhandle. It has been a rather crazy, I, I don't know how to put it any other way, crazy weekend, uh, you know, in, uh, in, in the shadow of the terrorist attack being uh, called by Canada, which I'm really uh, encouraged that Canada recognizes that this attack on the mosque uh, against uh, several uh, worshipers that it, uh, resulted in six people's deaths and uh, eight injured, uh, and the global I would say, and even within the ranks of the administration, outcry against the presidential orders targeting uh, Muslims. Uh, I, I can't imagine how busy you guys must be right now. Absolutely. Uh, These are really dim times that we're facing, but and Care Florida is marching forward and aims to be at the forefront of calling for justice for all and making sure that the facts are spread, not fear, but that we talk about facts, um, representing people when necessary, and just making sure that people's rights are known, that they know their rights, because, in fact, one of the most empowering things is to know what our amazing country guarantees us in terms of rights and liberties. And unfortunately, when um, citizens or immigrants or refugees or people aren't aware of what's afforded to them in terms of these rights, then it's easy for people to trample upon these innocent individuals. And so, yes, we certainly have had a lot of work to do and um, a lot of meetings to have, a lot of organization. Uh, it's, been, it's been difficult. It's been rewarding. It's been liberating even uh, on certain levels um, because you feel at some point that you're alone, but then suddenly there's this outpour of support from the community that's unprecedented, people coming together uh, and and just showing so much support and love and care. And uh, while one side of the United States is trying to divide us, there is this overwhelming push to unite on another side. Well, you know, with uh, CARE being in the Tampa Bay area, and I, I had the opportunity to watch part of the press conference that happened the other day. Um, I, I, I can't help but wonder, uh, it, it's rather ironic that here we have this thing going on in, in the shadow of uh, Trump's presidential orders and Central Command being in Tampa at McDill. Um, is there a sense of, uh, in addition to maybe happiness at the fact that there's this outpouring of support, there must also be a great deal of fear going on in the uh, Islamic community. Well, to be honest with you, there is a lot of ambiguity in terms of what people should expect. The executive order came so suddenly that people were were really just thrown off, go- off guard. Some people, as you know, were en route to the United States. Uh, some people had just landed. There was mayhem that ensued, and, and really um, there was no immediate explanation that we could offer because when the president of the United States, who is the highest authority in the land, issues executive orders that are unconstitutional and un-American, it leaves people in a state of confusion as to how to answer these because 
we are accustomed to answering questions based on the law of the land, based on protocol that is common and understood and accepted. But when you break all these rules, then it leads people to rush and try to figure out, okay, what can we do to make sense of this and how can we advise people? And yes, you're right. There was a sense of fear within certain members of the Muslim community because, you know, we have had cases in the Tampa Bay area of families that needed to travel for emergency reasons, but because they were green card holders, and, you know, a green card holder is a permanent resident of the United States. And so these people have no reason to think that they would be impacted, but in fact, the executive order did include them as part of those who were impacted. And so, you know, families who needed to travel for emergency reasons who now are unable to do so because they're not sure if they would be allowed to reenter the country. Or a, a mother who is being torn apart from her family right now as she is unable to re-enter the country. She was overseas when this executive order was um, uh, was was uh, made, and her family is here, and now she cannot be reunited with her family. So this executive order has succeeded in tearing families apart and breaking... Um, and breaking apart families and uh, stopping people's education, people who are positive contributors to the national society, to, to our nation, and even on a local level. Um, and it certainly has not succeeded and will not succeed in its intent, or at least its said intent, to uh, protect our nation. Because those are just baseless accusations, again, that have no numbers or statistics to back them. We have numbers and statistics to back our claims. Uh, We have numbers and statistics like the fact that since 1975, there has not been a single fatality on U.S. soil that was perpetrated by any members of, of those countries. Anybody that came from any of the seven countries identified have not been involved in any kind of U.S. terror or killing in the United States Yet we paint a picture as if we're trying to protect our our countrymen from people who have nothing to do with terror or have no history of attacks in the United States. It's ludicrous. Well, it it seems to me that um, this hyperbole and fear-mongering and um, uh, just really, uh, speaking of uh, fake journalism, on the part of uh, this current administration uh, has reached new heights of um, absurdity, I guess, especially given the information you're sharing with us now, of course, about the realities of, uh, of the seven targeted countries. And, of course, not really mentioning at all the other countries that uh, have been selectively not chosen with some belief, I think legitimately, that that's because of Trump's business connections in those countries. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what is the, uh, well, let, let's talk for a minute about the public support first, because there has sure. been a huge, huge I, and you know, I've never seen in my lifetime, and I'm 55, I've seen a lot of things. Of course, I was a child during the Vietnam era. I saw some crazy things then too, but I was a child too, so I didn't quite understand it, but there hasn't been in my lifetime the sheer uh, multiple demonstrations and protests that are just like coming uh, spontaneously and out of the woodwork, almost like you don't even have to ask people because they understand what he is doing is so absurd. What, What has it been like with the public support? Absolutely. Well, I mean, in Tampa, we have City Councilman Louis Sierra. We have State Representative Sean Shaw. All, both of them came out to our rallies in solidarity. But it goes beyond them. We've had numerous uh, different organizations who've come out to show support, interfaith groups, people from all walks of life, community members. I mean, you don't have to be a part of uh, a group, per se. It's just individual community members who've come out and said, um, we want to support you. We want to stand by you. Let us know what we can do to help. It's been empowering. It's been unifying. And it is really an honor to be part of such an amazing uh, group of people and to be part of this great nation where so many people, like you said, see that there is something grossly wrong with what our administration is doing and are willing to stand up 
in solidarity with the Muslim uh, community right now, but also emphasizing the point that we're not standing with you because you are Muslim. We're standing with you because you are our fellow citizens. And you can remove the adjective Muslim and put in any other word, and we would still be there to support justice for all. And that's what this is all about. This is about equality under the law. This is about anti-discrimination. And the support has been really just unbelievable, overwhelming, and we are so appreciative beyond what words can express for everybody's support. Well, it's got to be amazing to see the interfaith support of the Muslim community, uh, you know, and, and that includes uh, not just, uh, you know, Buddhists and Muslims, are, and of course Muslims, but Buddhists and Sikhs and uh, Hindus, but also Christians and Jews. And um, I think it underscores to some level the division that maybe we perceive exists at the grassroots level doesn't really exist to the extent that those in power who have tried to manipulate this uh, say it is. Sure. I agree. I completely agree. People present this image that we are so different, that different faiths, you know, that we need to stand against each other, when in fact at the base of all of our faith and even our humanity is this notion that we should unite on basis of goodness, on uh, justice for all, on the premise of equality. All of our faith and all of our inner uh, selves, you know, push toward this direction, yet we're being um, really kind of pushed in an opposite direction by mainstream media or the administration, fear-mongering rhetoric, Islamophobic rhetoric, xenophobic rhetoric that is really uh, causing a huge divide in the, in the nation at a time when really it's most crucial for us to stand together and to be one as Americans. Um, you know, the United States has long been a beacon of equality and justice and all of these values that are so dearly cherished by Americans who really love and care for their country are being challenged, and that's a really difficult thing for people to grasp. You see people saying, this is not my America, not in my America. Uh, people hold these values very near and dear to their heart, and when they feel that they're being threatened, yes, they will come out in the tens of thousands, in the hundreds of thousands, and even in the millions to say, you know, we do not support this. We will not allow for this to, to continue. Uh, to what extent has CARE been trying to, uh, I guess, Garner support. We know the the the, uh, uh, the Democrats in the House and the Senate certainly have been very outspoken. I, I was watching right before our show, uh, uh, Elizabeth Warren making statements to that end. But uh, to what extent uh, is a care trying to garner support from Republicans? Because certainly within the Republican camp, there have been those who have, especially during the campaign, of course, decried what Trump and his xenophobia has been promoting. So I'm wondering, uh, what, uh, what what's the sense you're getting from the other side of the aisle, if you will? Well, sir, you know, at CARE Florida, we're willing to work with anybody and everybody who shares our values and shares our American sentiment and our desire to see uh, the, the justice that was intended for all people applied. And so it doesn't matter. You know, we're talking about issues here. We're not talking about party lines. It doesn't matter if you're Democrat or Republican. It doesn't matter if you're black or white. It doesn't matter what you are. As long as you are willing to stand with us in solidarity on these issues, we welcome your support, and we will work with you. What, what are the next steps for CARE in relation to these presidential orders? We'll continue to move forward to try to raise awareness. Number one, we need to make sure that our community is aware, like I said earlier, of their rights and what they can do to protect themselves. Um, our executive director, Hassan Shibli, is a civil rights attorney, and he has issued uh, report after report and video after video and paper after paper and blog after blog, just making sure people know what they can do to um, what they can do to protect themselves if they're traveling and. What, advising them as to, you know, when to stay put, uh, who to contact if you need help. So that's the first thing that we need to do is make sure that people who are potentially affected by this know what their rights are. Beyond that, we're certainly working with many other organizations to contact our representatives 
and let them know that your constituents are unhappy. We disapprove. We are angry. We are uh, just livid at, at what the president is doing and that we do not, we will not tolerate it, that we'll stand up against it, and that we have expectations of those who represent us to also stand up against it. So different localities are reaching out to their respective um, representatives. Uh, here in the Panhandle, we plan a meeting with Representative uh, Dr. Neil Dunn, and other people are doing the same. There's going to be a rally uh, that a number of student organizations at Florida State University are planning this Saturday from 12 to 4 p.m., and that's going to be, you know, a big march. We anticipate lots of people to come out to, to that. And, again, it's just enabling people to come together and to unify and empowering them to march forward in solidarity with other people who share similar concerns. Um, the unification factor that's come out of such ugliness has been really phenomenal, and I believe strongly that it will really yield positive results in terms of uh, bringing America back to the, the uh, America, you know, for all that we grew up knowing that has so quickly slipped from, from you know, from between our fingers, or is slipping rather, and we want to hold on to that. Is there any sense of what the immediate fallout has been from these orders? I mean, you know, this breakneck pace, if you will, at which he's doing these things, you know, of course he made all these quote unquote campaign promises in the first hundred days to drop the hammer. Uh, it's the only way I could describe it. Uh, do you have any sense of which, how many people are, have been immediately impacted or is it just hard to say because there's so many? Um, there are so many. There are certainly hundreds who have been immediately impacted, as into literally were either traveling, um, coming into the United States, or had uh, or, or have arrived in the United States. But certainly, I'd say there were there are many hundreds more, if not thousands, who had plans to leave and now cannot. You know, you can imagine just scenarios that I would put in a hypothetical sense, but I can guarantee exist. You have people whose family members, perhaps green card holders whose elderly parents are sick or perhaps dying overseas and now they can't go visit them because mm. if they leave, they can't return. Um, you know, these are, these are real-life scenarios that happen every day. Um, people who need to leave for business, for work, for family, and now their travel has been restricted and their life has been impacted. Um, and, and unfortunately, that's a reality that people are just going to have to deal with until we can find resolution to the crisis that we're in. Um, we have been talking with Hiba Rahim with the Council on American Islamic Relations. She's the regional coordinator. And, uh, of course, I am very privileged to have met and worked with, on, on occasion, Hassan Shibli, who is uh, the lead attorney for CARE. Uh, how is, is there a hotline established or a number that, that people can call, particularly if uh, those in our listening audience have are impacted uh, in one way or another, either friends or family or themselves, as uh, members of the Muslim community or supporters can call to see how they can get more involved. Absolutely. Well, I should mention first that we're very grateful to many attorneys across the state who've called in and offered free pro, pro bono support and said, look, if you need any help, if you need support, if people... I mean, you can imagine that we've been inundated with phone calls of people who are confused and uh, scared and just don't know what to do, especially those who already have travel plans. Uh, and so there's been a lot of support on that end, um, and, and we really want to express our appreciation to all those who've offered their help. Um, there are many organizations, certainly, that are standing and helping, but our Care Florida number is 813-514-1414. And certainly anybody who has any legal questions uh, is welcome to call. We will do our best to answer uh, and to direct people to those who will give them the best answers. But our legal team is incredibly strong, and they certainly will be able to uh, provide the support necessary and answer those questions in the best fashion. So, again, that number is 813-514-1414. And we are honored to help any person any victim um, of this discriminatory uh, executive order, it is our privilege and honor to help them, and we'll continue to do that. And every single time 
that President Trump comes up with a new order, then he can bet that Care Florida and dozens of, and hundreds of other organizations will stand in solidarity as long as he is uh, violating our constitutional principles, then we will stand there to uphold uh, the values that we cherish so, so dearly um, in this country. Well, I know you can count on the support of the Revolutionary Road Radio Show. and We would love to continue to be updated as well as the Poor People's Economic Human Rights Campaign and uh, a recovery program that I work with that works with a displaced and homeless and uh, those who are struggling. Uh, my place in recovery, uh, we do have some people within our program that have come that have fled or uh, sought refuge with us that are persecuted minorities, particularly in relation to the Muslim community. So we're very grateful to have had you on here, uh, Hiba Rahim, who is the regional coordinator of the Council on American Islamic Relations. And I want to thank you again for being on the Revolutionary Road radio show. Please keep in contact, if you would, so we can uh, keep informed uh, as well as inform our public. Thank you so much. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you for all that you do. Thanks for having me. It was my pleasure. Thank you. And that was Hiba Rahim, who is the regional coordinator of the Council on American Islamic Relations, uh, responding to the absolute craziness of the Trump administration's presidential orders targeting Muslims uh, and immigrants and uh workers and uh this is just unfortunately the beginning of the battle that'll go back and forth and we want to let you know that we at the revolutionary road intend to stay at the forefront of what is happening and to inform our public and next week we'll be actually talking with uh an eyewitness who has been in palestine looking at the struggle of the palestinian people he spent several months there his name is david Pierce. he's involved with saint pete for peace He's involved with International Solidarity uh, Mission and a whole host of other groups. We'll have some uh, additional live uh, footage, or I'm sorry, audio from the St. Pete for Peace protest in which we talk to him and others about peace issues. This has been the Revolutionary Road Radio Show, and we are so glad that you're listening. And we close out with one of the bands that played at the inauguration protest, Blowback. Says it all. Yeah. <laughs>